Well, howdy. From Highway 177, I'm on Highway 177, uh, just east of, uh, I think it's pronounced Tonkawa, Oklahoma, on the way to Ponca City. Um, I need to catch up to speed here. So I think where I last left you off, I was on the way uh, into, I was in uh, uh, Buffalo, Oklahoma, and I was doing all that uh, middle of the night hiking because of the heat, over 100, 104, 105, 107, and then, uh, let's see here, so uh, in the morning, I was walking into Buffalo, I was going to the park, and then I was going to go get something to eat. And some uh, guy saw me in a pickup truck. So he stopped and said, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> That's you, George. <laughs> and uh, so I told him, well, I'm going to the park and then uh, going to get something to eat. He said, well, I'll take you to go get something to eat. So uh, uh, we went to the uh, pharmacy there, and they got a little uh, sandwich uh, counter. Sandwich. Uh, they got some tables set up. You can buy sandwiches and a pizza and all that. So we got talking. He said, hey, you don't have to worry about where you're going to stay tonight. You can uh, stay over at my place. So uh, we hung around on his construction site during the day. And then um, uh, he took me back to his place uh, over ba back in, um, well, all these places are, uh, what's the name of that place? Laverne. That uh, I had walked from, <laughs> that I walked from that night. So I stayed there at his place and hello Kim. Uh, and then uh, the next day we went back to the uh, construction site. And then he said, "Hey, you can stay here again tonight," <laughs> which was good because it was still in the hundreds. And then the next uh, next night did the same thing. And then, uh, instead of walking during the night, because it was still 100, uh, I think the uh, I think when I left you, the forecast was that it was going to go back into the 90s. Well, it didn't. So he, uh, he took me down to Alva. Um, that was about 40 miles, I think. Took me down to Alva. And then... Uh, my friend Denise came up. Uh, you met her on the first walk. Uh, here's a little clip. I think I got one. Uh, she came up to Alva, and uh, we uh, hung around for a couple days. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, yeah, a couple days. And then uh, she just took off back down to um, Texas, and so... Uh, she ran me over here next uh, near Tonkawa, dropped me off, because she's turning south. I'm going east. So uh, that's how I got to Tonkawa, and that's how I'm on the way to Ponca City. And then uh, from Ponca City, we're, current, we're continuing on eastwards. And the nice thing is, is that it's cooled off. It's uh, in the upper 80s now. But it's now it's still quite humid, so uh, you know you get uh, <laughs> you either get the hot 100 and a little bit drier, or the uh, lower 80s and a bunch of humidity. And I think we're going to be uh, keeping that uh, pattern through the uh, rest of eastern Oklahoma here. And the other nice thing too is that. Um, the uh, topography, I think, is going to start to become a little bit less flat. So we're going to get a little bit more uh, 
uniqueness here and there in the uh, land. So I think the plan now from uh, Ponca City, the next uh, towns of some size and where I can resupply are going to be uh, Pawhuska and then uh, Bartlesville and then Nowata and then uh, somewhere between Nowata and Venita or at Venita uh, I'll turn southeast to head on down to uh, Arkansas and I think I've mentioned this before um, enter Arkansas somewhere around uh, Siloam Springs if that's hey how do you how do you pronounce that if you know is it Siloam Springs or is it Siloam Springs or is it Siloam Springs but anyway that's the uh, plan on uh, somewhere in that vicinity of entering Arkansas I may enter it uh, the next town north um, but anyway that's the plan and then Arkansas I still don't know my exact route but uh, uh, basically it's going to be uh, a southeasterly route from uh, Siloam Springs down to uh, Helena, West Helena and then cross the Mississippi River there uh, into Mississippi right around Lula and then uh, go along the northern part of Mississippi and the northern part of Alabama and then the northern part of Georgia maybe take a little nibble out of uh, Tennessee just like we did with uh, taking a little nibble out of uh, New Mexico and then the final uh, oh what 470 miles or so will be uh, through uh, North Carolina which I'm thinking at this point I'm going to stay low in North Carolina instead of going up in the mountains because that'll be uh, that'll be during the winter as winter uh, starts coming on uh, so it's probably smarter just to stay low so that's what we got coming up and tonight in uh, <laughs> tonight in Ponca City the plan is to uh, camp out in the uh, cemetery. Uh, it's a pretty large cemetery, and it's uh, on the west side of town. And there's uh, no houses around, and looks like they've got a good number of trees. So I think uh, I'll be able to get by in the cemetery there without getting caught. Good morning. So, uh, got into Punk City uh, yesterday. Spent uh, a couple hours or so at the rec center. Um, charged up the phone, waiting for the uh, sun to go down so I could go to the cemetery. <laughs> and uh, once I got uh, out of the rec center and the sun went down, I noticed that. Uh, couple of the ball fields were really dark no lights whatsoever so uh, I ended up camping at the uh, at the um, far at the uh, farthest part of the uh, outfield in one of the uh, baseball di baseball fields so this is where I camped last night <clears throat> and now as you can see Sun's getting ready to get up, but it's not up yet. On my way to church, and then uh, from there, I got uh, 19 miles, 18 miles, 19 miles to uh, Kaw Lake. And uh, then tomorrow from Kaw Lake to, uh, oh, I don't know, about six miles past Shidler, Shidler, Shidler. And then after that, See, that'll be uh, Monday. And then Tuesday will be some near, somewhere near Pawhuska. 
And then I was also looking uh, last night or yesterday, yeah, last night. Uh, I think I'm going to be in uh, Arkansas maybe in two weeks, not three. I uh, yeah, miscalculated the mileage. So, uh, getting closer than I expected. So here's the, uh, I guess you'd call it Main Street. It's actually Grand Avenue in uh, Ponca City. Looks uh, kind of pretty with the uh, the low sun just highlighting the uh, tops of the buildings, huh? So the uh, history of uh, Ponca City is this. Um, Ponca City was, at, <laughs> was established overnight in 1893 at the beginning of the... Um, uh, land rush. Uh, you probably remember hearing about that when uh, all the settlers lined up on a line on one morning in 1893 and uh, they uh, shot off a gun, threw down a flag, and off they ran so that uh, anybody could stake a claim, a homestead claim, of 160 acres anywhere in the Cherokee Strip that had been um, surveyed off for uh, just that purpose. And um, the uh, way that they'd be able to keep their uh, homestead over the years is that they would have to prove that they uh, started improving it and started working the land and all that. So that's, uh, that's when Ponca started, uh, when all that um, took place. And uh, then, um, Let's see. Oh, so the town was called New Ponca at that time. It was named after the Ponca Indian tribe uh, that was relo relocated into this area. And the, uh, the town's fortunes over the years ebbed and flowed over the oil industry uh, because there's oil in the area. In fact, there's a guy uh, named Marland. He... Uh, he built up his uh, oil empire here in the area, and at one point in time, he owned uh, he owned 10% of the world's known oil reserves. So that's how rich in oil this uh, this place is here. Uh, also, the thing that really got uh, Ponca City on the map and up and going uh, north of here, there was a town called Cross, and Cross is where the uh, railroad stopped and the railroad station was there and uh, Cross was building up because of that. Well, the guys in uh, Ponca said, well, that's not going to be good for us because, uh, oh, look at this, free water. Huh. Um, the guys in Ponca said, that's not going to be good for us and they're not going to, the train's not going to put another station down here. So what they did is they, uh, went to the uh, station master and said, look, we'll give you two free plots of land in Ponca and we'll also move your house down here if you uh, become our station manager. So lo and behold, uh, the guy moved, the railroad stopped going to Cross and Cross, which was an up and coming be booming city, over time just became poof, a uh, blip of, uh, a blip on the radar of history and today what's actually interesting now too is that cross uh, has actually been swallowed up into the uh, city of Ponca City uh, as a uh, housing development <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, speaking a little bit more about oil uh, Philip 66 actually has a refinery uh, over here in fact the uh, tank farm is just over here on the uh, southeast part of town and then also speaking about the Indians the uh, so the Ponca tribe they were up, uh, originally up in Nebraska they got re relocated down to here uh, to the reservation and then you know at uh, sometime in the late 1800s um, I believe it was the chief's oldest son died and he had promised him that 
uh, he would bury him on, on their ancestral lands. So the chief and uh, a bunch of his warriors left the reservation to go up to New, to Nebraska to uh, go bury the son. And uh, the army came after him and, and arrested him, said, hey, you got to get back on the reservation. And uh, <clears throat> so the, most of them went, went back to the uh, reservation, but uh, the chief said no. So they, uh, they held him in prison in Nebraska. Now the chief got a lawyer, got a writ of habeas corpus to get himself out of prison. And then there was a big court case, uh, went up to the Supreme Court, um, which eventually ruled that uh, the Indians have uh, the same rights as all American citizens. And so that's how that all came to pass. And uh, uh, he got out of prison and the rest is history, so to speak. So this is uh, Ponca City and quick history. It's, it's pretty when it's quiet like this. And it's uh, actually, you know, it's not run down. I mean, there's a lot of vacant spaces here, but uh, it's not vacant and run down. It still looks like it's being kept up. Ponca City still uh, looks like it's going long, and the population, as I noticed, has uh, been staying steady, relatively speaking. It's gone down a little bit, but hasn't uh, fallen off like a lot of these uh, places. Nice looking city hall. And I'm guessing this is probably library. Let's see. Yeah. Main library. All right. Continue on. Go do our God thing for this morning and then uh, take off to uh, Caw Lake. All right. Did my thing. Just had a nice breakfast. And get this, <laughs> somebody paid for it. I guess, uh, according to the uh, guy there at the restaurant, he said there's this couple that comes in every Sunday and they just uh, pick somebody at random and pay for their meal. So uh, evidently that's what happened with me. I got the lucky uh, card in the draw. So whoever you are, thank you very much. And, uh, so now we're on to, uh, we're going to go to a place called Caw Lake tonight. Um, in the, on the way, we're going through uh, Ponca City Park. But in the meantime, we're passing by this right here. And this is a, a statue in honor of the uh, Pioneer Woman. So it's the Pioneer Woman statue. It was erected by that, uh, I told you about him earlier, that Marland guy who owned all the oil. Uh, he erected it in um, recognition and uh, thanksgiving to all the pioneer women who uh, were stout and hardy and uh, helped uh, their men, their families tame the tame the uh, the prairie and. Uh, I guess when you come to Ponca City, this is the thing to see. <laughs> In addition to the Marlin Mansion, which is uh, somewhere up that way. I think it's closed, though, today. So, Pioneer Women, thank you very much. And uh, I found that uh, everybody in Oklahoma has been pretty nice, very nice. In fact, I, uh, I put them on parallel with people in Kansas. So, you know, people always ask me, well, uh, have you come across any nice people? And I always tell the story that before I uh, began the first walk, uh, people always told me, oh, you be careful, there's a lot of crazy people out there. And uh, <clears throat> on the first walk, everyone I encountered was nice, but I did make a particular note that the uh, people of Kansas had a special niceness about them. And then all along the second walk, everybody was nice. And all along this third walk, everybody's been nice. 
And but I have noticed that um, here in Oklahoma, uh, they all seem to have the traits of the uh, people that I encountered in Kansas on the first walk. So Oklahoma, you're okay. <laughs> That's corny, huh? <laughs> And here's Lake Ponca, you know, looking at this, uh, there's a park over here on this side. For a weekend, it's not very crowded. In fact, it's not crowded at all. And then over here on this side, there's another park. Saw just a couple of cars. Not much else, so it looks like uh, I'll have a good rest area all to myself. <laughs> I think after uh, after here, I, got, I might have another, uh, I don't know, 12, 12 miles or so. And it's been kind of warm today. Didn't expect this, but the breeze is helping to uh, make it feel a little bit cooler. All right, well, that was, a nice, that was a nice stop there in the shade, overlooking the lake. As usual, I stayed a little bit too long. <laughs> and so, as usual, I'm waiting till the hottest part of the day to uh, finish my 14 miles. My, I've already done five, so 14 more to go. No clouds, so no relief. <laughs> of course. Call Lake. Here we come. I'm liking as I get further east into Oklahoma, it's getting a little bit hillier and hillier. And as you can see up ahead, starting to get into uh, windmill country. But also I guess uh, they are very nice to uh, People with handicaps, they let the blind drive here. That's kind of goofy, huh? <laughs> also, too, you know, I've always thought it's kind of funny is when you go up to a drive a drive up ATM. I mean, I rarely use an ATM anymore, but whenever you do go up to one, they've got the braille on it. A drive up ATM. Why is that? Well, take a look at this. I'm getting back to my favorite trees. <laughs> this is a type of a juniper. Wonder how long these are gonna last. Huh. Too bad I don't uh, have to stop and camp yet. Maybe I'll have some when I get up there. All right, got here to Caw Lake. Caw Lake actually turns out to be the Arkansas River. So the Arkansas River flows from there and continues on down that way, with the dam being down over that way somewhere. So a pretty nice looking spot. Just have to find a nice soft beach here. And thanks to Josh, Josh and Nicole, I was about a couple miles down the road. Uh, he said, hey, you need a ride? Get something to drink? So they took me to the uh, convenience store, got a little something cold to drink, and then they just ran me over here to the, to the lake here. Pretty nice. Looks like it'll be nice and quiet. Just need to find, night, find a nice spot, soft spot. Well, this looks like as good a spot as any. Got some nice soft sand, it's relatively dry. Got some people over there, won't be bothering them. 
right here at the good uh, sunset view of the water. And then tomorrow, just uh, take off over there and turn left. So once again, this is Caw Lake and the uh, Arkansas River. And uh, brings me uh, memories of the first walk when I was uh, paralleling the uh, Arkansas River for a bit during Kansas. There's a song about the Arkansas River, right? Don Williams. Oh, when the Arkansas River leaves Oklahoma. That's further down that way. <laughs> so I think that's it for today. Let's see what tomorrow brings us. I think we might be walking through a wind farm. <laughs> Let's see what that's like. Well, good morning. <clears throat> that was a nice night. Right next to the lake. Woke up to some uh, eagles fishing. <laughs> and it's uh, a little bit cooler this morning. That's good. I think it's only supposed to, supposed to be 84, but it was supposed to be cooler yesterday. It didn't turn out to be that way. So the goal is uh, get back to the road there, and then we're going to head that way. Uh, it's about uh, it's a little over eight and a half miles to uh, Scheidler. And then um, after that, it's just going to be some random spot camping tonight. It's from here. It's about 33 miles to um, Pawhuska. And then after that, I think it's about 22 miles or so to Bartlesville. And after that, it'll be uh, 20 or so, I think, to Nawada. So I'm going to have a quick bite to eat, pack everything up, and uh, then we'll get a move on. Well, that's a bummer. <laughs> I already missed a turn. I'm too lazy to go back a quarter mile. I should have turned back there. It would have taken me down to a dirt road, which I could uh, walk most of the way to Scheidler. It would have added about another quarter mile, but a uh, quarter mile on dirt, uh, extra quarter mile on dirt is a lot easier than uh, walking this pavement all the way. Oh well. All right, so road walk in Scheidler. Well, here's a milestone, ending the Osage uh, Indian Reservation. Well, there's our intermediate goal for today. Not here at the bottom, but uh, there in the middle, uh, um, Scheidler. And then uh, we're turning, make a 90 degree turn and going down that way and we'll be um, going around those windmills unfortunately can't walk through those and if that one fortunately can't walk through all this land right here you know what's interesting is that um, with all this private land that we have in the US you know and a lot of it being fenced off you can't access it, uh, which is kind of a shame. Um, in Sweden, they have a uh, philosophy, they actually, there's actually a word for it, called Allemenstraten. And uh, what Allemenstraten means is that you can actually, even if it's private land, you can roam right across it as long as you're not disturbing anything. So, you know, if the fields are cultivated, of course you can't do it. Or if you're going uh, through a, uh, a residence, you can't do that. Or if you're uh, disturbing a herd of cows, I guess that is the same as well. But uh, wouldn't that be kind of nice, you know, if you could just kind of just roam right through and make a straight line? You know, I don't see any harm in it, do you? So it's called Allemenstraten. So uh, let me know what you think, you know, especially with these uh, people, they've got thousands and thousands of acres. 
and they uh, may or may not be used or even you know uh, like the nature conservancy and all those conservancy groups they uh, snap up all these properties and then they say ha ah, keep out so what do you think you think uh, it would be nice if we had a philosophy like that called uh, Alamenstraten that you can just uh, roam the land now keep in mind that there are very few people that uh, actually uh, go out and walk and do these things so it's not like it's all the lands can be trampled and torn apart and all that so let me know what you think you think Oliver and Stratton would be a good thing or a bad thing I think it's a good thing <laughs> so just walking along minding my business and take a look at this here They've all come to greet me. How you doing, 4883? Oh look, 4604 right here. How you doing? You know, gone are the days they all have names like uh, Bessie and uh, whatever you name the cows. <laughs> That's a good uh, change of pace for the day. See you guys later. I got about another two hours to get to Shidler, Shidler, however you pronounce it. Hey, 4787, see you around. <laughs> uh, being one with nature, yes. <laughs> see you later. I don't know what it is, but there's somewhat of a uh, fulfilling feeling. When you're with all those creatures, you know, just the innocence of those creatures. They're just doing their thing, not thinking about anything and not a care in the world. Oh, to have their, those days ourselves, huh? I guess that's uh, part of uh, what the good Lord says, right? Don't worry about anything, just trust in Him and He's got all taken care of. Well, take a look at this sign. If you never slow down, you never grow old. I actually uh, take exception to that. I think actually if you slow down, you never grow old. <laughs> so, uh, I'm in the town of Scheidler. Scheidler, Oklahoma. And here's the Senior Citizen Center. And I made a stop over at the uh, cafe there, or pff, the uh, convenience store. So Scheidler was actually uh, founded in the 1920s. I think it was 19, it was 21 or 23. Some guy had 160 acres here, so he founded a town in on it. And then uh, oil was discovered. The town quickly uh, grew up. I think it got as high as, uh, oh, almost 1,800 people. Uh, well, and one, one source says it got as high as 5,000. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff here. The, uh, the downtown grew up, and uh, there were banks and things like that. And I guess uh, Scheidler had a reputation for being quite the lawless town because there were a number of bank robberies and uh, even a number of uh, highway robberies that took place around here. But as uh, quickly as the uh, fortunes uh, grew, they quickly uh, ran out as well. The, uh, I guess the oil slowed down. And then came the Depression. And so even though they had that oil production, even though the railroad had been coming through here, that wasn't enough to uh, keep Shidler going, and so it's uh, basically this uh, kind of uh, place I guess you go through to get to somewhere else. And uh, speaking of which, we're going down this way, and we're going to Pahuska. That'll be tomorrow. It's 24 miles. So we're going to have to find a uh, place to stealth camp tonight. 
And if I uh, remember looking at the uh, map, it's pretty much wide open country, so eh, we'll see what happens. So anyway, Scheidler, Oklahoma. And on we go. We're going down to, uh, I'm going to eventually hook on to uh, Highway 60 down here. I realize that uh, <laughs> now that I'm outside of it by quite a ways, I never told you about the uh, no man's land of Oklahoma and why it was called that. Well, if you uh, if you look at a map of um, the Texas Republic back from uh, the 1840s, right? When Texas was a uh, republic, and how that uh, one piece of it uh, jutted up northwards. Well, when Texas then uh, wanted to become a uh, state of the Union, uh, Texas, you know, was a slave state. And so, uh, because of the uh, Missouri Compromise, uh, for every slave state that entered the Union, there had to, there had to be a corresponding non-slave state. And so, uh, in order to uh, join the Union, Texas had to give up the um, that northern part of its boundary, the one that jutted up there. But because of the uh, way that uh, the territories had been surveyed by that time there was that one section which today you would call the panhandle of Oklahoma that wasn't uh, a part really of any territory it wasn't part of the Kansas Tort territory it wasn't part of the Texas it wasn't part of New Mexico so uh, when the uh, new boundaries of Texas were drawn that panhandle area was its own little lawless strip and it became known as no man's land because just about anything <laughs> anything could go there it was uh, no law so to speak and so that's the, the very short and very abbreviated history and why it's still called that today And that's uh, my story. I'm sticking to it. However, if anybody wants to uh, expand upon that, just uh, give us more information down in the comments. We'd greatly appreciate it. Yes, we would. Now, this is pretty quiet. Looks like it's an electric motor as opposed to a putt-putt motor. So the way these things work out here, they pump the oil and they put them into a small storage tank here and then the uh, contractor comes every once in a while pumps out the storage tank and then takes it to wherever it is they're going to take it into a bigger storage tank to then be shipped off to a refinery and then from the refinery that's where it then becomes uh, the gas or diesel or oil that you put in your car, or the plastic that you use, or what other myriad of uh, products that are made out of hydrocarbons. All from a little oil well in, in Oklahoma. <laughs> Which is something else that's kind of interesting, you know, in addition to the, all the cattle I've seen on all these trips. And then when you go to eat, uh, you get your beef from the, the market or you go to the restaurant. Now I always wonder, where was this cow? So sometimes now I wonder, where did this oil come from that I put in my car? Well, it looks like we're try starting to get into the forest here. <laughs> it's a 
mighty different forest. But look at this, you can see for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles and miles around. Look where we came from. All that land out there. Oklahoma's been a mighty fine state. I'll definitely come back and explore some more. A lot of Oklahoma I haven't seen. And uh, I'll even come back and explore the stuff I have seen. But it is a pretty setting. Especially when you look down uh, down this way here to the east. Alright, let me see what I can find. <laughs>